Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So in this episode, we're gonna talk about basic sciences and anesthesia. So do you really ever use your basic sciences after med school in anesthesia? Absolutely. Stay tuned. So you'll actually really use a lot of your basic sciences in anesthesia and even some courses from pre-med undergrad. So that's your organic chemistry, biochemistry, physics, anatomy and physiology, and pharmacology. So in anesthesia, we do a lot of procedures. So you need to know your anatomy. We do work with ventilators. So you need to know physiology of the lung. and also um, physics because some of our vents are using those theories and principles in how they work and how we are able to manipulate them. And then you also need to know definitely some pharmacology because obviously we're giving lots and lots of drugs. So when delivering anesthesia, you will use all of your basic sciences. When I'm teaching medical students about the theory of anesthesia, I usually go through some of the physics of it, some of the physiology of it, because it's really heavily um, based on human physiology. So the physiology of the lungs and also of the heart. Uh, most specifically, and then always go through the ventilator with them. So that is the most important part of the anesthesia delivery system is knowing how to manage the ventilator and what is the physics of it and how you actually need to control a patient's ventilation while they're having surgery. So safe ways to do that and basically the theory behind that is really, really heavily based in your knowledge of lung physiology and some physics. So as you know, in anesthesia, we use gases. Oftentimes we're using different types of gases for anesthesia outside of medicine in the hospital. So if you're going to like, let's say, get your teeth pulled at the dentist, they may use some nitrous oxide. And that's one of the gases that you can use for anesthesia. But for us in the OR, we're using something in that family, such as sevoflurane. And we also do use some nitrous oxide too, as well, for giving anesthesia to patients. And then we use another gas very commonly called desflurane. So these are all related to your halogens or those gases on the periodic table that are all the way to the far right. So remember that in chemistry, it comes back again. You kind of have to think about some of that as well when you're doing anesthesia. Pharmacology, of course, so medications. We use pharmacology very heavily, so we need to know all about drugs, how they interact, and how they will be beneficial to some patients or harmful to others. So we really need to have a great wealth of knowledge when it comes to that. Um, and we usually use medications in cocktails. So we use not just one at a time, but several at, at a time. We need to know how they interact with one another and how they will affect a patient. And based on the medical history of that patient, if that's going to be dangerous or safe. So lastly, we do have to know a lot of anatomy. So when we do blocks or regional anesthesia, we need to know all about the anatomy that surrounds nerves in the body. And those are gonna be the locations of the injection of local anesthesia. So we give that pretty quickly under ultrasound guidance, and that helps us. So this is one of our ultrasounds that we can use for blocks and we are going based on our knowledge of that patient's anatomy to place the local anesthesia in the right location and to numb up those nerves so they don't have pain. If you can imagine, those are pretty much all of the sciences. You will be learning them as you go along in your pre-med courses and also definitely in medical school. And as you're learning them, you know, you're gonna be able to realize later on how important they are once you're able to practice them in the clinical setting. When you do any rotations in anesthesia, you will definitely have to call upon that knowledge. So yeah, very important 
to us and what we do. And if we didn't have a solid foundation in that, we would not be able to practice anesthesia safely. So just know your anesthesiologist has to be really smart, has to know all that information and be able to kind of put it all together to make a good and safe plan for putting patients to sleep and for waking them up. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. And until then, keep it up, keep going, keep studying, keep reading and take care, stay safe.